Hello, welcome to Communications 108, Communication and Social Interaction. Today's presentation will be on how men and women communicate differently. So here's a little comic that kind of tells us a lot about how men and women see themselves. So in this panel, this man says, hey, cute hair. And the girl immediately thinks, oh no, what's wrong with my dress? He hates me. Uh-huh. Now, if a woman says, hey, cute hair to a guy, he, and I'm not saying all men, but a lot of men might think, wow, I'm irresistible. She wants to have wild sex with me and invite all her hot girlfriends too. So as you can see, there are some basic differences in how men and women perceive one another and each other individually. So we're going to start or launch ourselves from that point on. So first of all, why do men and women communicate? Men see communication as having a clear purpose. A conversation is based on solving a problem that needs solving or a point that needs to be made. Communication should be efficient and direct. Whereas women use communication to explore how she is feeling and what it is she wants to say. So for a woman, the conversation is an act of sharing and a way to increase intimacy with her partner. And then through sharing, she may release negative feelings and solidify her bond with her partner. So in a nutshell, when you want to think about this, women are using communication to figure out what they want to say. Whereas men say what they think and, you know, just don't worry about all the other details. And how men and women communicate is also very different. <clears throat> men are accustomed to listening to identify the problem to be solved, often jumping in with potential solutions or ideas. Men want to fix things. It's why women love men. One of the reasons. So when a woman initiates conversation, the man assumes she is seeking his advice or assistance. And a lot of times, as we've reflected at the previous slide, women just want to talk about things so they can kind of organize it in their mind. So for the man, listening patiently doesn't always come easily to him because his nature is to fix things in a efficient and effective manner. Women see conversation as the productive end in and of itself. Meaning, if she feels adequately, and there's a reason that word is in bold, heard or understood, she may not need to resolve a problem or make things better. Sometimes we just want to get it off our chests. And once it's off our chests, we feel better. Women see conversation as a productive end in and of itself. So when we're looking at this, we have to think about the fact that she's not necessarily looking for a solution. She's looking to open up and get stuff off her mind or off her chest. So the fact that she's being listened to eases her anxieties and reduces her negative feelings. So when your wife, girlfriend, female coworker wants to talk, what she really is looking for is someone to listen and share her feelings in a supportive, non-judgmental arena. So when men and women communicate, men usually prioritize solving problems and being efficient. And what we have to remember is that humans at some, on some level, hominids, homo sapiens, Neanderthals, um, hominid people have been around for a couple million years. But civilization has really only been around for about 10,000 years. So we have a lot of evolutionary biology that has dictated how we act, how we think, how we treat one another. And our civilized perspective is constantly at battle with our nature of 
you know, evolutionary biology with all the stuff that came before us with the 200 or 300,000 years of hominid or human homo sapien behavior. And in, you know, from a caveman perspective, that giant woolly mammoth is coming at you. You don't have time to research all the problems that could be encountered. You're going to throw your spear. So in the same way, when he tells a story, he only shares the details he sees as essential to the point of the story. And any woman who's ever had a conversation with her boyfriend or husband and he's telling a story, he doesn't have half the details that we would normally want. On the other hand, men often believe women over explain things. We give too much detail. And again, men want to fix things. So he will interrupt a woman to offer solution. And, you know, interruption is a normal part of conversation, but it has to be managed correctly. If a woman feels that she's constantly being interrupted, she's going to get angry and resentful. Women use communication to explore and organize her thoughts so she can explore all sides of the situation. So she's looking not just at the most direct efficient action, but what other options are available that could help her solve her problem. And by talking about this, she gets some perspective. So the woman isn't necessarily searching for a solution when she discusses a situation. Rather, she's looking for someone to listen and validate her feelings or ideas. When conflict arises, the men and women have very different reactions. Women want to process their thoughts and emotions to eliminate their negative feelings. They get on the phone with their mom or their best friend or a sister and they vent everything that's happened. And afterwards she feels better because she shared something in a cooperative environment. And again, she doesn't necessarily want to fix it. She wants to talk about it. And as I said, men want to fix things as fast as they can. And when a woman comes to a man to vent her feelings, they meaning the men, often get defensive because they feel like they did something wrong. They are the reason something broke. And that makes them feel inadequate, which no one wants to feel. On the other hand, if a man can manage his response and ask compassionate questions and listen as she explores her thoughts, the conflict will subside very quickly. On the other hand, when a man feels conflict, he prefers to reduce his stress by forgetting about his problems and focusing on other things, like watching TV or playing a video game. This can go to the extreme where, to forget his problems, he may engage in alcohol or drug abuse. And in that case, what he's really doing is self-medicating. Rather than taking a Valium or a Xanax from a doctor's prescription, he's going to drink, you know, five scotches every night. So um, there's a positive way, playing a couple hours of video games, not a bad thing. Drinking five or six beers every night, that is a bad thing. So you got to kind of keep an eye to make sure if you're a man that you're not going too far to the side of abuse rather than getting through the problem. When a woman tries to comfort her man, it usually makes him withdraw even more because he doesn't want to talk about his problems. He wants to forget them. So for women, and this again is very challenging, it's better to uh, be an understanding person and let the man work things out and let him approach you when he's ready to talk. You know, ultimately you can nag and ask and and, and offer all kinds of sympathetic statements, but until he's ready to deal with it, it's not going to help. So now we're going to look at the typical differences in male and female styles of communication. And what we have to keep in mind here, the word typical means average. That means that there are people male and female who do not fit into these categories. It doesn't mean they're weird or have a problem. It's just um, 
the average of a situation. And this is the average of how genders generally communicate with each other. So women are more likely to talk to other women when they have a problem or need to make a decision. Men, on the other hand, keep the problems to themselves and don't see the point in sharing their personal problems. Women are more relationship oriented and look for common interests and ways to connect with each other, especially with other women. Men, on the other hand, tend to relate to other men based on some sort of power dynamic with status and dominance being more important for them. So you'll often see a man, you know, join a group of other men and, you know, there is this kind of peacock way of acting where, you know, they stand taller, their chests come out, and they are defiantly proclaiming their masculinity. Um, and, you know, and women are much more likely to sit around with a glass of wine and look for things that they all have in common. Women focus on building rapport by sharing experiences and asking questions. Um, Self-revelation, self-exploration. When you're sitting with an, when a woman is sitting with another woman, they oftentimes share stories about their lives, and they see this self-revelation as a way of creating a bond. Men, on the other hand, like to tell and give information rather than ask questions, and they share their experiences as a way of competing. So if a guy is talking about his bachelor party and how he drank 27 shots of tequila from a stripper's belly button, you know, someone else is bound to say, oh yeah, well, I drank 34 shots of tequila from a stripper's belly button. No offense to strippers anywhere, or tequila. The point is that, and and again, it's not competition in an aggressive sense, it's a one-upmanship. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is a major difference in how men and women relate to same-gender relationships. If women have a disagreement with each other, it affects all aspects of their relationship. They don't talk to each other, they don't want to know anything about each other it's just they're done with each other at least until they make up whereas men can have a serious disagreement and then move on to another subject and go get a drink later so you know women tend to be much more emotionally committed to their sense of being right or wrong whereas men especially in same gender conversations tend to see it almost like a football play. You know, you get in there, you tussle for a couple minutes, and then you get back into a huddle and you're good to go again. Women get things done at work by building relationships, whereas men build the relationships while they're working on tasks with each other. So a woman may want to work with someone they feel comfortable with on a job. Whereas men, they'll become friendly with someone if they're working on a project together. Now here's one of these things that um, is a body language issue that we all kind of engage in without really thinking about. When a woman nods their head when a man is talking, it's to show they are listening. On the other hand, men think the woman is agreeing with them. He then assumes the women will go along with his idea. And she has no idea why he thought she agreed with him since he never asked her. On the other hand, men don't nod when they listen. They only nod when they agree. So if a woman is speaking and she doesn't see the man's head nod as he listens, she assumes he's either disagreeing with her or is not listening at all. So when your wife or girlfriend or coworker is talking, you know, throw in a few head nods, gentlemen. It's not going to hurt you and it's going to allow you to have a better communication style with the opposite gender. So, can men and women make it work with their communication styles? Absolutely. What we have to do is not criticize the other gender for their tendencies to communicate in a certain way. 
you know, we're talking about 200,000 years of biological evolution and social evolution. So what we need to do is understand we can't change the way an entire gender in communicates with us. On the other hand, what we can do is learn how to adapt to their communication style. Because especially, you know, we usually want to get our own way and as such, we have an overwhelming desire to figure out how to get our own way and a lot of this is based on our communication style. So that's it for today. If you have any questions please feel free to text or email me and otherwise have a fabulous day.